Hey man, have you ever listened to Thick as a Brick by Jethro Tull? No cheating if you haven't. I would love to see a reaction video. It's a masterpiece and one of the greatest albums that most people in your age group have never heard. It's musical rock art at its highest level. Challenge accepted. Welcome all fellow wannabes. Welcome to the channel. I am Gabriel Fast. I do claim to be the wannabe critic. Today is another request. Someone requested that I review this thing. There are more requests coming, and I just want to say that if you've requested something, it's going to come eventually. I, I'm a busy guy. You know what I mean? I got a lot of content, and, and I don't necessarily feel like I'm in the right mood to always talk about specific things. You know what I mean? But today, it just so happens to be Jethro Toll. Now, the person that said those things to me, uh, you know, about this, this record will go unnamed. I'm not going to say who it was. But that's some high praise for this album. For those of you who don't know, Jethro Tull is a band from yesteryear. Acquiring quite a significant status, uh, you know, in the music scene in the in the early 70s, late 60s, around that era, Thick as a Brick is a concept album. Really, that's what it is. Can you really call it an album, though, because it kind of all flows together like one song? I'm going to read you the Apple Music uh, info, you know, just to quote it. It says, Coming off the great success of the conceptual juggernaut Aqualung, Jethro Toll decided to try something even more expansive. A single track that would take up both sides of an LP or record. Leader Ian Anderson's stream of consciousness, lyrics, sound, pheno sound phenomenal, and the band's ability to shift dynamics on hairpin stylistic curves has never been more pronounced. Organ and flute chase one another through dexterous rampages while the guitars store their energy for the epiphonic power chord moments. Due to its 45 minute length, the track is hardly the most accessible in the group's catalog. However, it repays with every listen. A progressive rock high point. That's exactly what it is. That's why I wanted to read that bit of information from this, you know, Apple Music blip, whatever. A progressive rock high point, a concept album. If you listen to this particular rendition of the record, uh, you know, there's an interview at the end of it, and then they go in to talk about the recording process. They go in to talk about how, you know, it was kind of a meticulous process getting everything to just kind of be sliced together. But in a weird way, they were kind of just throwing things at the wall and seeing what stick. It was like multiple sessions of them just meeting in this dude's basement trying to make this thing happen. In the interview, he quotes it. He's like, yeah, I think we were trying to be like, you know, like Monty python a little bit an album where you're trying to basically it was like a giant parody in a sense but it ended up being awesome and it is true there is so many things in this record where it's like wow yeah the the level of musicianship here and when it was recorded back in the day like you don't mess up you have to be good you have to be talented you have to be a solid band and with as many moving parts as what's going on there's parts of this album that make the beatles look bad but yet you can see kind of some of those similarities within the music woven through the music, you know, of different bands and the same genre around the same period of time. I think they all kind of played off of each other in some way, shape or form. That being said, there's elements in this music, though, that is a complete standout from anything you would have heard back in the day. And honestly, I'm going to I'm just going to say it. I think the majority of people probably weren't ready for it. My friend hit, hit a really good point. I don't think that most anybody in my age group has ever really listened not only to Jethro Tull, but also probably has never really listened to Thick as a Brick. The thought of having a song be more than, you know, five, six minutes is kind of a foreign concept. Heck, most of the music nowadays isn't even appreciated on the way it's meant to be. Most single songs are put on playlists nowadays. You try to put a song that's over five minutes long on a playlist, and there's probably a good chance that no one's ever going to hear of it now, because unfortunately that's the attention span of what we see in, you know, the, this these, new, these newer generations of music. You have an agenda to make, you have X amount of time to get this record out because it's going to hit the best you know predictably in this period of time there's there's you know there if you're not a huge band already you have to figure out ways to stay topical and stay on point with everything and it's nice to go back and listen to something to where it didn't really have an agenda they just were th throwing ideas at the wall they had already become successful at this point their previous record had blown up which was aqualung which that scene in anchorman now makes so much more sense but the first time i heard this album i'm sitting on a beach and i'm like reading comics and just jamming to it and there is no standout you know you 
you can't go to, you can't there, there's not really a way to find the best parts of the song the best way to do it is to listen to the entire thing it, it repays you for listening to it multiple times which is kind of a foreign concept to a lot of people nowadays you know as i mentioned before about you know single songs kind of being enjoyed in a relatively short amount of time the best way to put it for me is this album is almost like a movie in a sense. Like it's meant to be enjoyed in the same t type of way as back in the day when you sat down to drink a beer and listen to an album, that's exactly what you did. You weren't scrolling on Twitter or Instagram. You weren't doing something else in the background. That's what you were doing. You were trying to absorb every piece of what was being laid down. And by golly, if Jethro Tull doesn't have one of the most entertaining bits of music that I have ever personally experienced. If you've never listened to this, I highly recommend. Is it one that I'm going to turn on all the time? No, it's not. Do I like it? Yes, I do. And I, it is one of those ones where whenever I do put it on, I don't think I'm going to be able to not listen to the entire thing because that's exactly what happens to me. Whenever I hear certain songs that I know I like the entire album, I'm like, all right, I'm turning that song off. I want to go listen to, you know, whatever it may be. It's usually a Queens of the Stone Age record, but I digress. This song slash album, whatever you want to call it, has that same effect because it gives you the feeling of, I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss any details. I want to soak up every piece of what this thing is trying to give to me. And that's a rare thing in music nowadays. Seems like some of the best music, you know, is unfortunately either undiscovered or has been just kind of lost in time. The standards have changed and it's honestly kind of a shame in a way because it makes me sad that I've never heard this until today. So to wrap it up, I think everything that he said is true. I do think that's true. There is a small negative though, and it's it's not actually not small, it's actually kind of big. If this song, this is inaccessible, and while it is great, it isn't one that I'm going to just listen to all the time because there is so much detail. It's meant to be appreciated in a specific way, but I'm not going to be spinning this album often, which is a shame, which does beg the question, why didn't you just make a bunch of smaller songs off of this awesome thing? If you're a musician, you understand like there's sometimes when you get into a groove whenever you're doing this thing and you can't recreate that. So I think the purpose of having this long jam session of a song slash album, whatever you want to call it, and getting the best bits of those jam sessions and seeing what hit the, you know, what, what hit right. And also having kind of the confidence to say like, oh, well, our last record was so successful. We're making money off of that. Why not just do this thing? It is an artist's decision in every sense of the word. They didn't make it for you. They made it for them, which is amazing. That's an amazing thing to do. But as far as practicality, I do have to take points away and I apologize. But there's so much I just said. There's so much that I just talked about. And I, I have to say that this one pleasantly surprised me and it was an absolute joy to listen to. As far as a score goes, I'm ta taking everything into consideration. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10, which is high praise. I think it's near perfect. I can only take points away for the fact that I think a lot of people listen to it and be like, man, that was awesome. And then never listen to it again, which is a shame. It really is. But that's my review for Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick. If you've listened to it before, if you like it, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much. You know who you are to the one who requested this. I really, really appreciate it. If you have a request of something you'd like me to review, let me know. I'll put it on the board, you know, and whenever I get to it, I get to it. Eventually it will happen. If you've liked what you've seen here and you want to see more, uh, just, you know, stick around to the end of the video to see more. There'll be a playlist. I do a lot of different things here. Games, movies, uh, music, the whole nine. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you for preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. I'm Gabriel Fast. I will always be the wannabe critic. Ah!